In the last few videos, you've seen how enthalpy and entropy contribute to chemical reactivity. Exothermic processes release heat to their surroundings and are enthalpically favorable. And entropically favorable processes increase the entropy or disorder of the system. On the other hand, endothermic processes absorb heat from their surroundings and are not enthalpically favorable. And processes that decrease the entropy of a system are entropically unfavorable. A chemical or physical process is spontaneous if it actually occurs on its own in the forward direction under a particular set of conditions. I should note, though, that sometimes spontaneous reactions are very, very slow. So just because a process is spontaneous doesn't mean it happens automatically or quickly. Sometimes spontaneous processes need a little kickstart before they happen, or sometimes they just happen super slowly, like over millennia. Spontaneity is dictated by both enthalpy and entropy changes. If a particular process or reaction is both enthalpically and entropically favorable, then it is always spontaneous. Combustion reactions are a great example of this. The combustion of liquid benzene, for instance, is exothermic, so enthalpically favorable. And since it takes 17 reactant molecules and makes 18 product molecules, it is entropically favorable as well. Of course, even though this reaction is spontaneous, it doesn't happen automatically on its own. There are gallons of liquid benzene upstairs in the lab, and they are not spontaneously combusting in the sense we would use in daily conversation. But if you took a small spark and initiate the reaction, it will most certainly proceed. Processes that are enthalpically and entropically unfavorable are always non-spontaneous. For instance, the reaction of sodium hydroxide with hydrogen gas to produce sodium metal and water is endothermic. If you've ever seen the very explosive reverse reaction, you might be able to guess this. And since it takes three molecules and makes them into four, it is entropically unfavorable as well. So no matter what you do to a mixture of sodium hydroxide and hydrogen gas, you won't make any sodium metal and water. This reaction is non-spontaneous. When a process or reaction is favorable with respect to either enthalpy or entropy, but unfavorable with respect to the other, things get a little more complicated. For instance, the boiling of water, taking liquid water and turning it into gaseous water, is spontaneous only above 100 degrees Celsius. This process is endothermic, that is, it requires the input of energy to overcome or break the intermolecular forces between liquid water molecules. But it's entropically favorable since a liquid is becoming a gas. Below 100 degrees Celsius, though, the reverse reaction, condensation, is the spontaneous process. That process is exothermic because the formation of attractive IMFs between molecules releases energy, but it's entropically unfavorable because a relatively disordered gas is becoming more ordered in a liquid. These processes illustrate that temperature, in addition to enthalpy and entropy, is a determining factor in whether a process is spontaneous or not. These three factors come together to describe something called the Gibbs free energy, delta G, of a process or reaction. Delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. It's important to note that T in this equation must be in Kelvin, 
not degrees Celsius, or heaven forbid, Fahrenheit. Gibbs free energy is a quantitative measure of the spontaneity of a reaction. It tells you about the driving force of a reaction. Negative values of delta G mean that a reaction is spontaneous as written, while positive values mean that it's non-spontaneous. That is, the reverse reaction is spontaneous. 